Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Lunch Break with Amy and Kevin. I'm Amy baca Oler, your CEA president. And as you can see, Kevin is not here with us today, but I do have a very special guest that is here with us, the president of the National Education Association, our president, Becky Pringle. So wonderful to have you here in Colorado, Becky. It's just been great that you've been here meeting with our members, meeting with educators, hearing their stories. Um, so that's my first question of you. What are you hearing from educators as you go around the country and listen to their stories? So it's so great to be with you, Amy, and all of your members yeah. um, joining us for lunch, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, the food? You know, duty-free <laughs> lunch that gets taken up by things like this. <laughs> um, uh, you know, as I listen to educators here in Colorado, I, I heard many of the, the same things that I've been hearing everywhere I've gone from California to my home state of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, our, our teachers and support staff, our bus drivers, our secretaries, our counselors are so excited to be back in person with, the, with their, their kiddos, with their little ones. Um, uh, and they are feeling the stress and the pressure that honestly this Delta variant that got thrown our way um, has only uh, made grown, that, that has only grown um, that anxiousness, um, some fear about safety, uh, but most especially what they've shared with me is that they, uh, their concerns about the extra stress and pressures that are on them and we know as educators, both of us, right, um, we take a lot on ourselves and because yeah. we, when the kids show up to us, what do we do? We do everything we can to make sure that their needs are met so they're ready to learn. But in this pandemic, all that has been put at the feet of uh, our schoolhouse doors and certainly um, at the feet of our, of our educators has compounded that exhaustion and they're reaching out to us and to each other to figure out how we address uh, that well-being that we know impacts our students' well-being, which we know impacts their, their ability to learn. And what I've learned, Amy, is that educators all over this country, collectively, we have some answers, and that's what we're gonna be working on together, aren't we? Yes. Absolutely. You know, and it is that partnership with the NEA that um, when we here in Colorado, we're seeing just the significant needs of our educators around their well-being. Um, we reached out to the NEA and the NEA answered with a grant to allow us to uh, partner with CU Anschutz around a mental health hotline to support our educators. Um, so if you are struggling and you need support, reach out to the hotline. There are also other resources there to help you. Um, as, as you said, we need to be there for one another and we need to ensure that we are taking care of ourselves as well. Um, you know, I know you have seen, um, just as I have prior to the pandemic, we had a significant educator shortage, certainly here in Colorado, all across the country. Um, we have seen that. So what, can you talk to us a little bit about what you've seen in regards to the educator shortage, but really what is the NEA doing to um, address the educator shortage? Um, as we know, there is no more noble profession than that of being an educator, but it's a challenging time um, to encourage people to come into the profession as well as to keep them in the profession. I know that's a big priority of the NEA. It, it absolutely is, Amy, and when I visited uh, the educators in Fairview mm -hmm. Elementary here in Denver, uh, one, of, one of the things that one of our teachers said really, really struck me. Actually, it was a counselor. Um, when I asked them what they were doing to take care of themselves, because mm -hmm. we have to do that, we have to be responsible for our own self-care, but one of the things she said, said was, yes, we do need to do that, and we need to not only re re remove the barriers for to, to taking care of ourselves, but also we need to actually make changes in what's happening for educators all over the state and all over the, the country. And so one of the things that um, I was excited to learn from your leaders is how 
Um, they were really leaning in to uh, collective bargaining, using those tools they had to make sure that educators were, uh, voices were being heard, uh, that their contracts were being respected, that they were uh, working with administration, um, with their superintendents, to ensure that they had safe working environments. Um, uh, because all of those things absolutely impact if educators will stay or whether they will leave. And one of the things we're really concerned about, Amy, is not only Oh my goodness, so many of our, our educators are retiring early, so that's uh -huh. a problem, right? Our veteran educators. But we're seeing a drop in uh, student enrollment in our, in our pre teacher preparation colleges as uh, well, and universities. And so we are working at the national level to address that issue systemically. It's one of the things that I am, at, questions I'm asking as I'm going around uh, from state to state. What kind of solutions are you working on that actually will make a difference? Um, and in addition to colleagues connecting together, which is so important, so they're providing support for each other, one of the things that came up, right? You know that when we talked with educators yesterday, was compensation, educator pay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. not okay that we have support staff who are not making a living wage. It's not okay that we have teachers that are living in cars. That's not okay. Uh -huh. And so that is an issue that we absolutely are addressing. And I know that's something that you're working on here in Colorado. Yeah, I think those partnerships that we have from the local level to the state level to the national level to address all of those issues and in, uh, including ensuring that we are recruiting educators of color. We know the importance of having educators that reflect our students, that look like our students, and that's something I know um, the NEA has been working on, and we're happy to partner in that work uh, with the NEA. You know, um, in case you haven't noticed, election, it, election day is one week away. There is a big election happening right Ooh. now in our state with school board races as well as across the country. Um, you know, as you look at that national picture, um, and certainly, again, with school board elections here in Colorado, what would you say is at stake in this election cycle, and why should we vote? <laughs> uh, elections matter. We know that, right? Yes. Um, we did not just get the uh, Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program fixed by our, 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 our Secretary of Education. And those of you who have public uh, school, th that have loans still, please go to nea.org slash savvy. That's S-A-V as in victory, because we won. <laughs> I, uh, to get more information about how we can help you uh, either eliminate those, those loans completely or reduce them significantly. That didn't just happen. That happened because we fought so hard to ensure the election of President Obama, who made the appointment of Secretary Cardona, who said, I'm going to fix this system. This is not OK that our, stu that our teachers have been teaching for years are still in debt. Um, elections matter because every single decision. You know, when I started my first uh, year of, of teaching, you know, Amy, I think you know, I taught eighth grade science for over 30 none of your business years. <laughs> <laughs> and when I stepped the, the, that first day in my class, in my classroom, I didn't have a clue. Well, I didn't have a clue about a lot of things, but I didn't have a clue how important it was for me to lift up my voice, not only for the students in the confines of my own classroom, but all of our babies, right? Yeah. And, and every decision that's made in our classrooms about our students, about us as educators, about public schools, it's a political decision. It's made by people who are elected or appointed by those people who are elected. So we have to decide who who are in those positions of power from the school board all the way up to the White House. That's what's at stake. Public education is at stake. Our professional rights and authority and respect, that's what it, what what's at stake. Um, honestly, Amy, our democracy is at stake. Yes, and I think we've not seen a time, um, you know, like we have now where it's so important that we have trusted partners and collaborators in positions like school board who will listen to us, the experts, who will hear our stories about what it's like to be in the classroom, in our workspaces. 
um, as they make those really important decisions around things like health and safety, um, who will listen to the science. So if you have not turned in your ballot, fill it out. It's super easy to do. Get it into a drop box, get that ballot in. Um, if you need to know who the recommended candidates are, candidates are you can go to cea.yourvoter.guide um, and find that information. But more than anything else, get that ballot filled out and turn it in. You know, you also know a little thing about elections as you were just recently elected to <laughs> the president of the NEA in the middle of an ongoing global pandemic. Um, but despite that, you have been leading us with uh, grace and dignity and inspiration. Um, so what is your vision as you lead in this very challenging time? What is your vision for the NEA and the over three million members that belong to the National Education Association? Um, if you had to put a period at the end of the word vision, I would have said that there will be no more variants. <laughs> um, uh, yes. and, and we will we will actually be able yes. to say post pandemic. Yes. Um, but we are still in the throes of, of this pandemic. And as I took office last September, what I said to our members, our partners, our elected officials, is that my vision for the NEA, the largest labor union in this country, is that we would unite not just our members, but this entire nation to lead a movement to reclaim public education as a common good, as the foundation of this democracy, and then transform it into something that was actually never designed to be, a racially and socially just and equitable system that prepares every student, every student, every single one, to live into their brilliance. Well, we will gladly follow you to fulfill that vision, and we're so lucky to have you leading us at the NEA. It uh, could not be a better person for this moment in time that we are in, which is a hard time. Um, our educators are struggling, I know. I hear it here in Colorado. You hear it across the country. Um, but you also remind us that we need to look for those moments of joy. Um, and, and find hope. And there are lots of reasons to be hopeful. And um, so I would just ask you to, to end us out with um, what are your words of hope for our educators who are doing such amazing work day in and day out, serving our students? Um, what words of hope would you bring to them? I said to the educators that gathered yesterday, and I, I would say that not only our members, but our leaders who have mm -hmm. made that decision to step up, to lead in our association, uh, both our formal and informal leaders, yeah. within our association, within our professions, at our schools, um, all of those educators who have, have taken that additional step, um, uh, uh, certainly um, uh, are a source of inspiration for me and for each other. We are so resilient. Our human spirit is quite remarkable. What we are able to accomplish with our students, um, how we are able to uh, bring change in our communities um, is, is so, such a sense of hope for me because I know, I see it every day, Amy, that our leaders, our educators never give up, and they never give in. They always make me proud. I've been saying this, you know, I've never been more proud. All those years I was teaching, I have never been more proud than right now to be an educator and to see the incredible spirit, determination, tenacity, um, uh, dedication of the people who have committed their lives to educating America's students. And I just want to say to all of them, you know, look up. Look at these beautiful mountains. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We are lucky here in I Colorado. Know. Just look up. The sun is still shining. And it will rise again tomorrow. Thank you so much for all you do for our students, for your colleagues, for this state and for this country. Thank you.
Well, thank you so much, Becky, for all that you do to be the leader of the millions of educators across this country. Um, you bring us hope, and we are so lucky to have you as the president of the NEA. Uh, thank you for joining us today, and I hope you have a good rest of your week. Enjoy your lunch, and we will see you next time. Thank you so much, Becky. Thank you, Amy.